border walls. That's what's border. Well, there's a border between the United States and Mexico, and there's a border wall, wall between Canada and the United States, which happens to be a highway usually, or a small fence, or a line, which usually is made up of sensors up there. And one of the reasons that line is up there in Canada is smuggling. Um, a smuggling can, you can usually consist of firearms. A rifle down here, let's say, costs $500, and you can't get a rifle in, in Canada. You can't get a pistol. You can't own a pistol in Canada. That's their gun laws up there. And it's hard to own a rifle. You can own shotguns, but you can't own a rifle. Especially if they're military style. Well, every rifle is military style anyway. Um, because one of the things is the French-English wars. You know, remember it was once French Canada. And then it became British Canada after 1776. And even up to the middle of the last century, there was a very shaky peace treaty between Quebec and the rest of Canada. And so at one time, they were at war. They seemed to be going canoeing up there in 67. And if you went canoeing in Quebec, you had a British... Mountie with you, or Canadian Mountie with you, I should say. Maybe I shouldn't say British, but the French call them British. Um, it, it took a, it took the killing of a premier up there to stop the, the battle. But the battle hasn't stopped. The French are arming themselves with the, because they can cross border in, in the States in America and buy a rifle or two rifles or pistols and that thing. And the borderline is to keep the guns in America, you know, freedom of the bear arms, from entering Canada. Um, American Indian tribes arm themselves up there. The French up there have armed themselves because one of these days, I can't say one of these days, but there are two languages spoken in, in Canada, French and Quebec, and uh, English, Canadian English. And you will look at anything coming from Canada, say a movie, is French and English. Uh, product sold up there is in French and English. Going into Quebec, you better speak French. Uh, because the French do not like English. Uh, what do you mean? Well, there's a nickel mine in Quebec that's uh, mining is done by English. French will not, it's below them. And at one time, most of the roads in, in Quebec were gravel. And you could have seen it when you moved into Quebec is right there. But that's border wars. And um, in the south, um, no matter how big your fence is, at some point it's not going to be reached all the way across. Uh, especially going west, you start running into American Indian tribes. Now, there might be a fence there of some form, but most of them have sliding gates, swinging gates, sliding gates, especially the difference between Apaches in the south and the Apaches in the north. Same tribe, same language, totally physically different. The American Apaches are fat. Obese, drunken, 
and you go just south of the border and physique, they're, they're not on government aid. Big difference. And it's dangerous to be a migrant in Apache land, period. It's dangerous to be a migrant in Apache land, period. You can vanish. The Apaches don't like the, the Mexicans, South Americans, Latin Americans, Europeans, period. And if they catch you, you vanish, period. The Apaches in Arizona or New Mexico, they don't like the white man, period. They, don't, they, they consider them Europeans and they still don't like them. Of course, getting south of the border is the same thing. Uh, Mexicans are not found in Apache lands. But they're all the same. No, they're not. Yes. That's a thing. And the borders have been there. There's a long history of, of um, rivalry. The old saying about the Apaches would hit the Americans and flee across the border. That's just, you know, across the Rio Grande. Uh, and when they attacked the Mexican, uh, the Mexican armies would chase them into the states, you know. Uh, they have, as someone said, the Apaches, well, they signed a peace treaty. You call it a peace treaty. White men speak with false tongue. Yes, Mexican government speaks with false tongue. The Mexican government has never liked Indians. At one time, they were uh, last century, they were doing a running battle, battle with American Indians in southern Mexico, which is another problem too with dealing with firearms. I can go into Mexico City and buy a machine gun. made in another country. Yes, there are gun shops in Mexico. I can buy just about any kind of military piece of equipment I want, as long as I don't use it in Mexico, as long as it goes across the border. Whereas the drug cartel buys guns in in the United States and bring him, bring them back into things so they can fight fight the army. There's a literally speaking a armed war going on in Mexico between the drug cartels who happen to own thousands of acres of well let's see poppy fields cocoa uh, trees or bushes yeah they they learn that on their private estates, they can grow drugs and the government really can't do anything about it. They try, but you know, war. So that border is, is porous. I mean, of course, the main, some of these main cities, but you go toward the American Indian pro property, uh, it's, a, it's a barbed wire fence or a Stringy, stringy fence there, you know, which, with gates in there. That, that's it. But it's always been a problem. And you're going to build a border wall like Donald Trump wanted to do? No. It's good, but at a point, it's not. 